This was the moment, 35 years ago, Hannah Hawkswell first appeared on our television screens. Little did anyone realize she was about to become a household name and a national celebrity. No one could believe that in the 20th century anyone, let alone a woman, was still living such a harsh life, weathering some of the worst winters on record, at a remote farm in the high Pennines. Hannah was 46 when producer Barry Cockcroft and cameraman Mustafa Hamouri came to Low Burkhat Farm in 1973 to start filming. They returned many times over the next two decades to chart Hannah's struggle to remain on the farm. Hannah Hawkswell was left on her own when her mother, the last of her family, died 12 years ago. In the house, there's no electricity, no water on tap. When she wants a cup of tea, she has to go to the stream in the field where the cattle graze. Now in her 80s, Hannah still vividly and fondly remembers the day the television crew came to call and her life changed forever. There'd been a discussion uh, about programmes and who they should have to make them and uh, quite a few with thinking along the lines of well-known people. Um, and so, uh, well, Barry says, why not go out and, and meet ordinary people? And so the, the reply was, well, you go and do it then. So he was make, made a, a series, it was what he called The Hard Life. Um, so anyway, Barry arrived one um, morning or to, at some time at his desk and found a message. Met this woman, good talker, might be worth looking up. It's all right, thank you, will mummy? Ah, you little beast. <laughs> oh, you little beast. Well, he said it was lovely, and Mustafa behind the cameras talking very quickly, as he did. Um, and I loved having them. I was sorry when they went. They were lovely people. I would say I was very lucky that Barry was, in the first place, the man he was, and also that I liked, the, liked Mustafa, and, uh, you know, I just liked them. And, and, of course, they became friends. And, and I just liked them, and I was sorry when they went. I missed them when they went. Hannah's plight gripped the millions of television viewers who watched, and Yorkshire Television's switchboard was jammed for three days by people wanting to find out more and help her in some way. My father died when I was seven, and my uncle came to manage the farm for us. Um, uncle used to say sometimes, uh, you know, there was repairs and things to be done. Maybe a beast had broken the um, the thing that you tie, its chain was tied to, and things like other things. And and Uncle would say, announce, I'm going to do so and so, and I shall require a labourer, which was never well received. But you know, after I was left on my own, I was jolly glad that at least I could do. Uh, knock a nail or two in and, and, oh, and I was quite an expert even though I say it myself I was quite an expert with bailing string There is a further hazard which forces Hannah to hang her food in plastic bags from the ceiling to protect it from rodents driven to seek winter shelter within Lowberg Hat We've always had rats what, uh, I'm sorry to say one time and another uh, there was one a while ago, I met at the foot of the stairs. I don't know which was the most frightened, it or me. But fortunately it went the other way. Uh, no, I hate their horrible things. I don't like them. It wasn't easy. There was the good side and, and the not so good. Fairly, fairly harsh, but I was blessed with, a, on the whole, a good physique. 
uh, and I like the animals and, and I didn't have to, which wouldn't have suited me at all, I didn't have to take orders from anybody. Well, the, this is Rose, of course, the mother cow and, and grandmother now. Um, two of her daughters, the oldest one, Puddles and, and Patch. Uh, uh, he's... Uh, he's a grandson, Bubbles, the big one. And uh, he's another grandson, the little Pickaboo. They're half brothers, those two. I sometimes think they like me, my little family, and, and sometimes rather like children, especially the little ones, because you bring them up from, uh, from babies. Sometimes the temperature drops so low that the stream flowing a few yards from her door, the principal source of water, freezes solid. And she's obliged to make the difficult downhill journey to the reservoir to fetch water for herself and the cattle. For the cattle, I used to go to, to down what we call the new road to, to the bridge, to Boulder Bridge, and, and carry buckets. Um, but you never know how much water you need or how much the cattle need till, you, till you're short. One of the most touching scenes was a rare occasion when Hannah left the farm to attend a harvest festival supper and dance. Her enjoyment of the social occasion and the music was obvious. I hadn't been before, um, but went to the, to the harvest supper and then there was dancing, dancing afterwards. Um, you know, it was quite different, you know, a lovely male. Mrs. Field was quite a character. And um, a hunting horn at one point, I think. But in some ways, the Harvest Festival celebrations only served to emphasize Hannah's loneliness and sense of isolation. During winter, Hannah can go for 10 days without seeing another soul. She's 46. There's never been a man in her life, no real prospect of marriage. Well, uh, that's something that one can't just choose to do. A good marriage is a good thing if one's privileged to meet anyone. Um, uh, I think there's all the difference in the world between a good marriage and being on one's own. But of course, about, if it isn't a success, well, that's, there's not, I think there can be nothing worse than being obliged to share a roof with someone you're um, utterly at variance with. That's dreadful, terrible. Um, but that's something, uh, it's in other hands, you can't choose. One can't go into a shop and say, I want a husband. Hannah Hawkswell remained alone at her beloved Low Burke Hat farm for another 15 years. Marriage was never to be for Hannah, but her newfound fame brought her other opportunities. The documentary had turned Hannah into a national celebrity and the film crew followed her getting ready for her first big trip outside the Dale. Among the invitations was a request to attend the Women of the Year lunch in London as a guest of honour. She had never been to London before, so she prepared very carefully. Since she had no water on tap, her laundry had to be done in the reservoir below Low Burke Hat. And the first new dress since her mother's funeral was purchased. And a hot 
Would you exchange your life in the Dales for you know for going to functions like this and living in London? I mean, could you... it's nice for a while, but but, uh, but not. I wouldn't think on a permanent basis. No, I would need to be quiet and to get back to the hills. You're going to be presented to the Duchess of Gloucester. Well, I didn't know I was to be presented to her. Oh, it's very wonderful. Yes. I hope I'll be here with the, in, the, in the correct manner, that's all. No, no, no. It's Hannah Hawthorne, your children. Very nice to you. Can't say much about you. <laughs> who, who was looking after your farm? The neighbours looking after my farm. Let's talk to each other too, you get less fine. Could you go back a bit, Hannah? Let's go back to the garden. This is where we had to talk very naturally yes. because uh, yes. usually the press tells you what to talk about. Yes. This we don't get that today. <laughs> To begin with, the event, I don't know if it still is, it was at that time held at the Savoy Hotel. And um, so Barry was saying this, that, and the, you know, different outlining details and so forth. And, and he said, oh, oh, by the way, you'll be staying at the Savoy. Well, I'd never stayed at, in a hotel in my life before. So man, I said to a friend recently, there's nothing like starting at the top, is there? But Hannah returned home to the Dales, little realising her life was about to change once again in a way she could never have dreamt. Having given people an insight into the world of the remarkable Dales woman, Hannah Hawkswell, the film crew returned 15 years later to see how her life had changed. Thanks to the generosity of well-wishers, the farm now had electricity and she had a little more money which she had invested in a few more cows. But Hannah's back-breaking daily work on the farm continued and every winter became harder to endure. One's had a few winters over the years, and bad winters, and, uh, and there's something I, in my very bones that rebels when the bitterness comes, the, the snow, and the, and the cold, and the bitterness. Uh, no, I hate it. I, that's the only expression for it. I know there's a certain beauty, which is very nice, but it doesn't... Um, it doesn't appeal to me, because I detest it so. so Bill and Bert, come on. Zook, 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 zook. Her health and strength were beginning to fail, and eventually millions of television viewers watched as Hannah took the heart-rending decision to sell up and leave Low Burkat Farm for good. Zook, 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 zook. Didn't me ever think uh, it would come. Uh, even now, sometimes I can't believe. It's, it's like sometimes as if it's hap something happening to somebody else rather than myself. But it's for the best, I think. I knew there was a limit to the time, you know, you can carry on a, a one, one woman um, on a hill farm. And I was getting, you know, the winters, I couldn't move a lot better than if I could move as well now as I did then, I would be very happy. But I couldn't let me hurry about, you know, as well as I did in the cold. Um, and if it had come a bad winter, and of course the land, um, you know, I couldn't farm it and hadn't been that I could farm it properly myself. And so one, like Gilbert and Sullivan, taking one consideration with another, you know, it was the best thing to do. Tell me, who is this? Oh, this is Rose. Um, oh, the, the senior cat. Yes, uh, my, my lovely Rose. Uh, no, I like her very much. She's and lovely. One, one assumes that uh, it's going to be difficult to part with her, I assume. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. The day of the parting, but a satisfactory arrangement had been made. Good friend and neighbours getting them, and, and I know he'll he'll be good to them, and, and so that that is very lucky in that that respect. Come on, Kush. 
push pads. Uh, That's all right, Alan. We've got them now. Yes. No need to worry. Uh, no, thank you very okay. much. Okay, now don't worry about them. We'll thank you them very much. You. I know they have a good I'll, home. I'll, I'll and it, dash now. It's not a road for dawdling. Goodbye. It was difficult when it's been your home and and you feel in a way a sense of betrayal and um, you know and it had been the family had lived there in that house um, because it was built when my grandmother and her brothers and sisters were children so nobody had lived in that uh, at that place but not in that particular house um, but us. Now settled in a village nearby, Hannah's life was to take another dramatic turn, and the woman who had barely left her farm, let alone the Dale, set off on a grand tour of Europe with producer Barry Cockcroft and cameraman Mustafa Hamouri for a new television series aptly titled Hannah Hawkswell, Innocent Abroad. I've been interested in places, and so, um, I don't know how it came about, but uh, you know that if I fancied going abroad, um, just Barry said, "Oh, I want to come you, with you and, and bring a, a camera crew," and, and that was how it was. Capri is particularly famous for its blue grotto, a cave in the cliffs, entered by transferring to small rowing boats, which negotiate their way through a low and narrow gap in the rock. Regrettably, the unseasonable weather had agitated the sea, making entry a trifle uncomfortable. Hannah was not happy. Is it not beautiful? Beautiful. No. The Blue Grotto, not, uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not to be repeated, um, because you boarded a little boat uh, and, um, and you went through uh, an arch a low archway, um, but the procedure was you had to lie flat in the boat and whether the, the boatman back over, Barry said the water wasn't as high when he'd been in, I mean, it maybe was blue. Hannah's fame had spread far and wide and while strolling through the Italian city of Florence, admiring the art treasures, she bumped into two of her fans. I'd like to thank you for all the pleasure you've given us, both in books and on the television. Thank you very much. And what a stout life, Hannah. Yes. When we think yes. of you going down for the water, you know, when it's frozen. Yes. In all that oh. ice. <laughs> yes. Oh, Enjoy the rest of your holiday, won't you? Because we think you've earned it. Thank you. And we're so much. thrilled to have met you. So thank thrilled. you. Yes. I've Goodbye. enjoyed Goodbye meeting now. you too. And, Bye -bye. And, and enjoy your holiday also. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you. Bye-bye, my dear. Bye-bye Bye-bye. Thank you. Do you still get letters from me? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I had a... Just within a week ago, or ten days, from a gentleman in Canada. In Canada? Yes, uh, he'd been a farmer, as I... You know, in the same in wild country. So you get letters from all over the world? Mm, different places, yes. Mm. Not a lot, but, you know, now and again. What sort of thing do they say to Anna in the letters? Oh, mostly, you know, they've enjoyed the books. You know, they'd watched the films and they, they enjoyed the books. And, you know, some to hear how I am. And, and some lovely letters and uh, are just thanking me. And even on the Grand Canal, Hannah was recognised and hailed from a passing water bus. It was a wonderful trip, yes. You know, places I'd never dreamt, only read about. Um, never dreamt I would ever be there. Uh, Venice was wonderful because it was altogether different. I mean, you got out of a, a motorised vehicle and into a boat. And then it was all like a, a great inland sea. So, you know, it is, a, it is all, you know, different from, I would think, anywhere else uh, in Europe. 
But there's one place Hannah can't bring herself to visit. Today, Low Burkett Farm is almost unrecognisable as the place where she lived for so long. Two decades on, it's been completely refurbished and is a family home with all mod cons. It wasn't easy and I don't go back. I can't go back, the ties are too strong. Um, no, it's never, you know, I'd never known another home and, and for people like me, if you've I uh, haven't known another home and, and all its associations and, and ties. It isn't easy for anybody. Although Hannah had to leave the farm, she couldn't leave the dale, and she moved to a small cottage in a village just a few miles from Low Burkett Farm, where she now lives a quiet life. It's still a bit different. Uh, you know, one, I think once a country woman, always a country woman. But it has, you know, it was the right thing to do at the time. Couldn't have stayed up there forever. Um, and uh, but uh, um, you know, there's certain things you miss. You win some, you lose some. There's plenty of things to do in the house. No, the, the problem is, it isn't what I would do, you know, there's far more to do than I can get done and would have time for. I sometimes wish, uh, I sometimes wish I had time to be bored. I wouldn't like to be bored. I'd say, you're not good at throwing things out, are you, Hannah? No, that's one thing I don't do. I'm a different generation by far than you young people was brought up in wartime. It was make, do and mend. And, uh, and of course, when I was on my own, there wasn't money to buy things with, so you made do. And it seemed, they do come in useful. I know I keep too many, but no, I know I do keep, but it's the way I am. And, and um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. For Hannah, home will always be where the heart is, and Hannah Hawkswell's heart will always be in the Dales. You know, there was nothing, I was just me, there was nothing um, special about me. Um, as I've said, I, and often say, I was, still am, and always will be, just a plain Dales woman, just a plain country woman. <laughs>